There are many ways to sculpt a tree within ZBrush, but in this tutorial we're going to use it on ZSphere. We're going to drag it out, and we're going to put the floor tile on and put it into a perceptive view. Now, whilst keeping edit and draw on, we were able to make other extrusions from the object. Now, once we have moved the, the object out, we will then be able to edit it by turning off the draw mode with the move, scale and rotation tools. Draw can be toggled on and off to continue to keep extruding these parts from the object and adding further ones in already existing locations from the extrusion can be done in the same way. Toggling the A on your keyboard will show you the Z-sphere as a mesh. Toggling between this enables you to manipulate the object and add further I'm going to speed this process up so you can see the desired result. Making sure that the branches are it moved and rotated into different directions so that the tree itself isn't one dimensional. As you can see I added multiple different uh, locations for the branches to, uh, to appear from. This can be done as mentioned earlier with the draw and edit tool turned back on. If you want to remove any at any point what you need to do is hold the alt button whilst in the edit mode to remove the new intersection. Once you've fully completed the object, you'll need to toggle on A on your keyboard and convert the Z-sphere into a Polymesh 3D. This will allow you to do the sculpting which will make your tree look like a real tree. Turn it to madcap grey so that you can see the detail in which you're putting on your sculpt. And dynamesh your object. And turn it on to a manageable level. This will enable you to sculpt and also redistribute your topology as you go along. Changing the colour swatch can help you see the object further. I'm going to change clay build up brush so that I can make ultimately differences in the model. The aim for this sculpt is to turn it into a fable like almost tree with lots of different intersections and crossing parts. subtract detail by holding in the alt button whilst making the changes to the sculpt. Remember to over exaggerate these adding and subtracting parts of the sculpt to change the shape and manipulate the object into changing its geometry. This will be beneficial when it comes around to 
uh, editing the shape later on in terms of its topology. Try and give the tree as many characteristics as possible to, in order to make it unique. In, however, if this is a tree that you're going to replicate over and over again within your environment, you may want to remove as many asymmetric details or noticeable details as is possible so that it doesn't appear to be repeating throughout your environment. Once you've completed your sculpt, you will need to start to manage it and lower the detail. This can be done in a variety of ways. We're going to go into Subtools and what we're going to do is to duplicate the subtool and rename it as one of them will be our low poly object and one of them will be our high poly object. We now need to turn DynaMesh off and we're going to be working with Z Remesher. In order to help us keep the detail in certain places, we're going to use the brush tool called Z Remesh Guide. This enables us to drag out guidelines on our object in order to show where we would like to keep the detail. As you can see, a dotted line appears on the object where you draw it. If you want to remove that, press Alt to go in the opposite direction to those lines. As you can see in the video now, I'll be Alt and drag like you're using the brush across them. Ultimately with this tool what you're trying to achieve is putting lines in areas to keep the shape of the object so that the Z remesher doesn't remove detail in which you might seem useful. Placing these around the entirety of the tree will enable us to decide which parts are kept and which parts are not necessarily as important. The amount of lines that you do can be as many as you like in order to keep as much detail as you, you can hope for, but let's face it, when it comes to Z remeshing, the object is going to be lower poly, so therefore it will automatically lose detail. These lines are there to help the process and perhaps keep as much as possible the detail that you want when it's converted to a low poly object. This is the reason why we make a, a duplicate subtool, so that we have the original subtool still within our scene. So if anything goes wrong, we can duplicate that again. Once you've completed your Z remesh guides, you're going to have to edit some of the um, variables within the Z remesher. You change the target polygon count 
to what you would like it to be. Obviously this is going to be losing detail more and more so the lower it is. The change of the adaptiveness of that changing remesh with the guides and the curve strength, uh, strength will be there to um, take your guides into consideration. Please allow some time when pressing the Z remesher for the object to Z remesh as it may take up to a minute or two. Once you've done that, show the low poly visible so you can see any anomalies that may be in the object. These can be changed with a move tool or a simple uh, sculpting tool. Turn polyframe on in order to see the way in which the polygons are aligned or laid out within your mesh. You can undo these um, Z remeshes as many times as you want to get your desired results as well, so please bear that in mind. Detail is often lost in areas, even with the guidelines um, being put in, so it may be worth going back and trying again. Changing the uh, target polygon count to a higher amount or a lower amount, depending on what level of detail you need for the project. Remember that Z-Remesher is an automatic process and will only do a job as well as it's allowed to based on the guidelines and the adaptiveness levels in which you have already decided for it. But using these brushes allows you to have some control of how the automatic process um, continues. As you can see, a lower level target for a polygon count will remove some more of the detail. But if this is what you're after, you'll be able to add some of the detail again later. Remove some of the anomalies, including faces in which are going inside of each other, and also any that are giving any issues. I'll do that by using a simple sculpt tool brush, as you can see. Search around your object to find as many as you can, as this will be the object that you'll have to unwrap. And any changes in this within ZBrush are going to be the most advantageous. Obviously another piece of software could be used to do the same, however it's much easier while still in ZBrush to re-Z-Remesh re the object and do any other changes in which you need to have done to it. Remember if there are too many anomalies and it's looking like it's too much hard work, it's probably best to Z-Remesh again and change the adaptiveness or the uh, target polygon count. As I mentioned earlier, the Z-Remesh will take some time with higher poly objects. I hope this tutorial helped. Good luck with modelling your own tree sculpt.